I always say that sexuality is like uh, going on a vacation. You don't always want to go to the same place twice. <laughs> Bisexuals, out of all the acronym of uh, the LGBTQ+, plus, kind of are the ones that have had a, um, not the hardest time, but it's never really changed this sort of thing. Oh, it doesn't really exist. People don't really believe it. Oh, you're just, it's just a sort of a stopgap before you go fully gay. All that stuff that's still prevalent. And so in a way, even though I've been married to a man for ever, I just think it's really important to remind people that bisexuals are everywhere. And in a funny way, the sort of whole trans explosion recently in the, in the last sort of decade or 15 years has been really helpful because I think they have broken the binary for bisexuals as well as everyone else. I have selected the traitors and the course of the game is now set. This whole experience of the traitors has been just so great and partly because it was so left field and unexpected and I didn't quite understand why they wanted me to do it. So I met with them and then I realised that it was because they kind of wanted me to be theatrical and to sort of be camp and to play this character, this larger in life character. And sort of in a way that the, me doing that would kind of create the mood of the whole show. And once I understood that, I, I was really on board. And then of course, getting to work with Sam Spector, who is the costume designer and styles me in it. When I have a costume on, I, I really understand what to do. And so to have the freedom to go to push the boundaries like we've been doing, that's made it really exciting. And I think it's great to kind of see the fashion of that. It's such a large part of the show and of people's enjoyment of the show and clearly. I think I've always been sort of comfortable with sort of androgyny or, 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 or sort of playing up my femi side in, in, in terms of doing shoots and in fashion that I wear. In, in real life, I don't really do that. I have my own sense of style, but it's a bit more sort of weird little elf. And I, 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 I've looked back at lots of photos of me, you know, there's people on Instagram who always do have these little uh, things where they look at all these old photos. And I, it's so fascinating. I've kind of always done it. I've always been, I think people like dressing me up and I quite like being dressed up. I like the, I see a photo shoot as a sort of a, a character to play in. And I think it's a really important thing to do as someone in the mainstream is to sort of challenge people's views of what a man of my age should wear. I actually really like the fact that a show like The Traitors, a reality competition show, is actually able to have big statements about sort of, as you say, gender f***ness. Don't suppose we can say that but challenging people's ideas of the binary in terms of what men and women wear. It's much more exciting for me to do something like this than to just sort of, you know, look nice. Yeah, I'm not interested in looking nice. I am, I am nice, but do you know what I mean? I want to look sort of mischievous and fun and challenging. <laughs> I had a phase in the sort of the early 2000s of doing these bonkers films, uh, 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 you know, on the sort of a queer scale. Some of them were more coded than others. Spice Girls at Sea. What an extraordinary combination of girl power and horse power. Can't this thing go any faster? I loved making Spice World. I loved those girls. And it was just right at the cusp of their greatest time, you know, after that it all kind of slightly went downhill and went a little sour and Jerry left and everything, but it was just such an amazing time. In that film I wear a chest wig and I didn't want to have to um, go into, into makeup every, after, uh, after lunchtime to get my chest wig refitted because I was so itchy. So I just pretended that I didn't take it off, but I did take it off. So as a consequence, if, you, if you're bored, you could watch Spice World and see my chest wig move up and down in every scene. <laughs> Teamwork. So, how are we? Are we good? Yeah. Are we happy? happy? Are we dope? Word. Wicked. When I did Josie and the Pussycats, I just had such a blast. It's interesting because it's sort of so ahead of its time in terms of what it does about product placement and that this way that we have these insidious messages in our culture. And also in Josie and the Pussycats, I just did an impersonation of Richard E. Grant playing the manager of the Spice Girls in Spice World. I just completely copied him. I just didn't have the time. Gentlemen, where are your troubles now? 
Forgotten? I told you so. The uh, thing about Cabaret, again, I didn't want to... Kind of like the traitors, like, why are they asking me? Because at the time, in the early 90s, when I did it in London for the first time, I, I, was, I didn't do musicals. I'd never done a musical before, and I was a little snobby about it. And luckily, I wanted... The way I wanted to do it, when I said yes, was exactly the way Sam Mendes wanted to do it, which was to sort of do this sort of gritty, kind of really embody the character with... Uh, what it would have been like to work in one of those clubs in the Weimar Republic. And that involved sort of a lot of sexual sort of openness. And so, I, you know, when I came to New York with it, it was hilarious being so objectified in my early 30s, like my nipples being mentioned in gossip columns and things like that. But I think it was a really positive thing, again, a really positive sexual statement to put out. And especially at a time in America in the late 90s when there was such great scandal and sensationalism around and shame around sexuality because of the Clinton scandal. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. X2 is the queerest film I've ever been in, and that's me saying that. It's an allegory of queerness. Queer director, lots of queer actors in it. I love the fact that something so mainstream and so in the comic book world is so queer. And I think, in a way, you know, those sorts of films really help people understand queerness because you make an allegory about it in a sort of narrative, artistic way, and everyone is less scared of the concept. And also about, you know, having sort of power and having a great, beautiful thing about yourself that you've got to keep hidden from the rest of society in order to be accepted. Queer people understand what that's all about. Whenever anyone says to me, I saw you in the L word, I always say, oh, so you saw me getting up the by a lesbian with a strap on then. And they just go, because that's what happened to me, which is something of a TV first. It was a lot, that was a lot. When you do something like that with someone, or you take many leaps in your friendship. And one time I was in New York and I w went to this bar and, um, and I was going in and they, uh, and, and they said, oh, you can't come in, it's, 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 it's you know, girls only, lesbian night. And I was like, oh, and they went, oh, Alan, you're an honorary lesbian, you can come in. <laughs> Florence, my dearest, I love you so much, but, I'm a homosexual. A what? I, I was sad when Schmigadin was cancelled because I was really looking forward to the next one. But such a great idea. And also, you know, <laughs> playing uh, the mayor, the sort of, rep you know, repressed gay mayor uh, called Mayor Men Love, hilariously. There's, you know, I, 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 there's a great song and then he re reprises it when he wants to, when he's going to come out. But sadly, he does it at someone's funeral. <laughs> So kind of bad timing. But that was really, I, again, I really liked that. And also I loved the fact that I, I had a, a sort of a love scene with Fred Armisen. Something that I didn't think would happen in my life, but I love Fred and it was so cute that I loved, I really loved making that. And then the next one, I got to be all Butch and um, uh, Sweeney Toddy. I've got such range. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Gee, Michelle, you're looking really lovely today. Okay, see you in biology. Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. Again, another I, I, thing where I don't know why they asked me. It was the first film I'd ever made in, in Hollywood. It was one of the first things I ever read when I came here to sort of, you know, whore myself around. And, and just so clever and witty and, you know, and it's one, it's one of these films that people, some people are obsessed, many people are obsessed with it. I actually did it, there was a screening of it in Atlanta recently, I did a photo shoot for this magazine there and they did a screening of Romeo and Michelle and people were, it was like f feverish. It was almost culty. And um, it's great to be a part of something like that that people, that people are so passionate about. I think what's great about the sequel to Romeo and Michelle is that just going back to something that is so beloved and having uh, a sort of, a relationship with these characters, and also just, you know, it's many, what, how many years is it? Like 30 or something it's gonna be uh, since we did the first one. So, you know, we're all different. And I, I actually know what the story is, and it's really good. So I'm excited, I'm excited to go back to it. Welcome to an all new season of strategy, betrayal, 
sabotage and murder. I imagine that, you know, people, I mean, I think the people, reason queer people like the Dreaders is because it's the campus thing since Christmas. It's sort of, you know, <laughs> there's me swanning around in a sort of full fur with a feather in my hair. It is camp in that it is very heightened. And it's also uh, about, you know, pe people are lying. And I think we are, I think something about queerness is that you've, you've, you understand the concept of having to hide something about yourself. So, you know, that's very similar to what the experience of, of the, the traitors. So I think there's a huge leap that people have, queer people have with the show. And they also embrace fun and campness and theatricality. And also are, you know, it has a heart as well because you sort of begin to feel for these people as well. You get really involved with them. Some of the things that are successful in the show are the theatricality of how I look and what I wear and what I say. The fact that that's on a mainstream competition reality show, I think is really a positive thing. And I'm really happy about that. And also I'm happy that, you know, I actually lobbied quite hard to have more queer uh, representation in terms of the contestants in this next season. So they've upped the ante a bit. Hold on to your kilts, dearies. The games are just beginning. It's sort of a really great thing to um, remember to say yes to life and to say yes to things that you don't really understand or seem a little weird. And I realise I've done that all my life, actually. I've always kind of been open to new experiences. And I think that's something about as you get older, you're kind of encouraged not to do that. And so for me, it's been really important to flout that convention. And here I am doing this show that I really enjoy and have such a laugh doing. And it's because I said yes to something new and slightly cookie.